Yes, Father. Uh, CPAC is it today's February 25th. I'm sorry, February 25th in the year of our Lord 2021. And as Donald Trump is speaking at CPAC this weekend down in Florida, so it's okay for us to have a little meeting here, uh, we the people, in uh, the Kenson Abbey. And I'm going to be going over some of my designs so can, you know we can move forward uh, as a uh, community project manager for Kensington. Uh, yeah, we're going to also we're going to check into not only the the lots and the properties of uh, PMARR or the Philadelphia Scrapyard Systems, but as well we're going to define how the 1980s with MAD uh, just exploited mothers. Uh, who were very upset over losing their children to drunk drivers, which is understandable. Education is very small. Uh, but how they applied that in the 1980s to remove all the bars off the corners in Kenston, which is a blue-collar neighborhood. 1980s when you couldn't find a worker in here anymore because they already got rid of our manufacturing or was just about in the process of doing so through NAFTA, which would come up in the 90s. And their free giveaway properties and stuff like that, and the gift properties to make the, give the evil uh, landlord and the wicked tenants and properties to keep us inside of cells, they would be governors. Governors under governors under governors under governors. All right, uh, governors are something that they put on transmission to keep it from running over a certain speed. They're called governors in the mechanical trade. But anyhow, we're gonna check in this bar situation because if you notice in the 1920s, they exploited woman's suffrage, telling a wife that she was slave to her husband. No, you're slave to your husband. You're slave. You, you a whole housemaker? You're slave to your husband. All right. They use that to take federal control of, and that plus World War One, uh, control of alcohol, firearms, and tobacco. That was the 1920s. Alcohol, firearms, and tobacco. Prohibition. Alcohol, is fire, firearm, and tobacco. And coming out of that, when they they lost a case in court against a TV crew. So RCA was pissed off about that, that's China. Yeah, they were pissed off about that, but they put in the FCC. They start regulating your program because even though you own the TV, they would control the content. And coming out of that, when they, they lost a the case in court against a TV crew, so RCA was pissed off about that, that's China. Yeah, they were pissed off about that, but they put in the FCC. They start regulating your program, because even though you own the TV, they would control the content. Right, until they got that back. But anyhow, as they used the World War I woman's suffrage to give the government control of your alcohol, firearms, and tobacco, take it out of the hands of we the people and give it to this corporate conglomerate, the Federal Reserve and the FDIC, put it under the United Nations, uh, uh, the Union League, uh, you know, but anyhow, League of Nations. But we gotta get our bars back because what they did and exploiting the mothers of drunk drivers, exploiting their pain and their misery from the ignorance they raised our kids with without teaching correctly as they're taught at home.
But anyhow, they use it to remove all the bars off the corner to take state ownership of the package goods. See, that's where we still inked out a little bit for ourselves. We could own our own bars. We could own our own bars. We could own our own nightclubs. That's why they closed all of them up. During the 1980s, it was, oh, well, I'm going to come into your men's club because I'm a woman, but uh, you know, you're discriminating, so I'm going to come in anyhow. No, that was horse shit. That was the government already invading on third-party contract. That was the government already imposing its religion, its secular humanist shit, on the Word of God. In the Father and Son, Holy Spirit. I got to get down the yard. It's already, uh, uh, well, 939. <laughs> Good numbers. But still, I got to get moving. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, Father. And for other proof, see, uh, Peter and all the other disciples, when he came down to him, push come to shove, when he came down to the wire, Christ couldn't say a word for himself. And no one else could speak for him. No one else would speak for him. Because they spoke for him, they equally would die. And they didn't have that short. Even with everything they've seen, just like myself. Even with everything they've been through, just like me. Even with everything that they put through and all the pain they've already suffered. And yet still being pulled through by the word of God, by the voice, ministering to our hearts. We still can't believe, we still can't believe. Until they seen him come back out of the tomb. At that point in time, the disciples knew. There's nothing here, there's nothing to see here. Uh, why do you look up for the, the living among the dead? All right, just like our loved ones, they're only asleep. They're already with the Lord. They're already on the other side working their way back here. Why do you look for the living amongst the dead? Pay no attention to what you see with your eyes. Look through your faith. Christ did die and was risen again. He did die and then raise from the grave three days later. Yes, all in the course of one week. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. See so you know how I can help myself up on the water? When I, when I see Jesus the ghost, that which no one else can see walking on the water, and I'm terrified because I see it's my death, or I see it's Jesus, I see it's someone from the other side. I see a full body operation, but I don't see nothing at all. I just sense him there. All right, but I reach my hand out because he tells me, come join him on the water. Come walk in faith with me. And I reach out and I take his hand and I step out on the water. And as I step out on the water, I begin to stand up. You see how well it works, the things are appearing so like that. But then I start to sink. Because everywhere around me, I don't see anyone else believing. I'm still going on everything I can see, everything I know, everything I've seen in the past before. Not what my Savior is showing me. And then he helps me back up on the water. And we get to the other side. It's not a problem. Then I come back and tell the others, and I bring them back. As the Father comes running, sees you from a distance, yes. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. It all connects. It's physical, literal, and metaphoric. It's 3D from a concept through one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional to the fourth dimensional man. To the fifth dynasty which is Christ and that's his return where we start building it and then they're building there we're building here and the understanding the rest of the light bar shows up immediately just in the intellectual you can start drying your tears our loved ones and stuff immediately I already seen on TVN uh, Joshua and whatever with the health stuff the collagen I'm hoping it's natural they say it's 100% natural I hope it's cold pressed I hope the ingredients and nutrients still stay in it but once Trump writes that uh, presidential edict or the presidential executive order to remove the Codex Elementarium, the European Union's uh, uh, hat on us, the Homeland Security, DHS, HHS, the psychological crap from the, from the money, that which Hitler put together, the Enigma. 
And we get rid of the enigma. We already have our definitions. Adam's already defined the word for us. God brought him to Adam. Adam told him what it was. And that was it. God said, yeah, I agree. That's what I would have said. Name of the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, let me get down to the yard. I got to get my shoes on. I'm still trying to get my shoes on, Father. I'm still trying to get those boots on. <laughs> yes, they call it occupational therapy. I call it blue-collar therapy. It's the same thing. All right? It's that which trains you up or reminds you of who you are and what you are and who you are and get you back in touch with reality, get you back in touch with yourself, get you back connected to God and your family and your brothers and sisters, your fellow Americans, my fellow Americans, yes, Christians, and people of uh, various faiths from around the world, all under one God, yes, in many different ways, many different cultures, all uh, circumcising themselves to live in peace for the glory of the Lord, for the gain of Jesus, and for the glory of God. Glory to glory. And then he returns with all our loved ones. And we just, we're just here. <laughs> we, we run the whole place. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, no, Solomon, we're not going there again. We run the whole place in my image, not in our image. All right? So you follow him that follows him. That's me. That's the word. That's the word incarnate. That's the word made flesh. That's uh, me, Kenzo Bear. One of a kind. One of a kind. I made it here. This is my patent on the human race. Uh, whatever Bill Gates and uh, Melinda say, no, I got this patent. You check on their patent from March 26, 2020. And you let me know what the hell that was applying for. In Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, that'll be part of the defense against them. Or maybe part of prosecution. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, yeah, I didn't forget that shit either, Mad. And all your development and your policies and crap. All right, all your laying your snares. You caught my nephew in that shit. All right, coming home Saturday morning, just going back to his home, mind his own business. Yeah, he had a Friday night out. And a uh, man delivering the papers, coming to load the paper machines early in the morning, was on cold medication, so he was already impaired to begin with. And the drunks in front of him, the rich kids from Mount Airy, well, they're the ones that caused the accident of the guy coming down the ramp, and they stopped at the other end or whatever. And my nephew came along, mind his own business, and plows into them. He was the one that got charged with the vehicular. He was the one that got put away. He was the one that got put in boot camp. He was the one that had to pay retribution. And the people from Mount Airy, not a word was said. And the guy driving for the Enquirer that was on the cold medication, not a defense was offered. My nephew was offered up like your sacrifice because he was a low man on a ta totem pole. That was my brother's son, one who I'm also looking out for. Yeah, and now it's time to pay the fiddler. All right, and the fiddler's on your roof, and I ripped the whole fucking thing off. Excuse me, I ripped the whole damn thing off. Oh, excuse me. I've opened up your skylight, and I'm coming down to see you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, not the aristocracy. No, 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 no. Not the politicians. No, 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 no. Not the teachers. No, 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 no. Uh, not even the representative of the press. No, 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 no. Nobody was held accountable. Oh, here came the blue-collar worker. Here came the, There's our sacrifice. Here he comes. Here he comes. Yeah. A carpenter. Go figure. Yes, Lord. Thank you very much. The vindication of her brother. I give to his sister from their dad for her wedding gift from her uncle <laughs> in Jesus' name. And her mother and her other uncles too. Yes, one family under God, indivisible, in liberty and justice for all, especially us, you know, the deplorables. <laughs> 